All right, I took the roller, the roller inductor off the uh, the ARC five uh, nineteen T nineteen, I believe it is. All right, now the first thing I saw on this end is let me get the right angle here. There should be a screw right there, and there isn't. Okay, so you move this out of the way, and you can see this is a clip, and you just slide this out. Normally it couldn't come out if it had the screw in it. But of course the big the big finger person that was in here didn't do it right. Now look at how dirty this clip is. Okay. Now that's like the if you see my uh, uh, video on the uh, the volume control. Okay. Uh, that's all the telltale signs of deox. Okay. Uh, what you do is you clean this uh, with an eraser. All right. You first you clean it with alcohol, make sure it's 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 got any oils off of it, and you clean it with an eraser. And then you put a little bit of oil or a little bit of grease on it, put it back together. But it should have had a screw in it, but it didn't. And then this end just comes off. And you clean this. You could clean this with some alcohol. Uh, this is a connection. Okay, in other words, when that clip goes under here, so that should be clean with an eraser. Okay, there's a, you see this, there's a ring, let's see if it's in focus. There's a slit in here that this piece goes in. And that's your connection. It's just like the volume control on a transistor radio. Alright, and you want a little bit of spring in that. You might want to bend a little bit. This has been bodged by somebody who knew what they were doing. Yeah, <laughs> Now both these gears on this end are totally gummed up. Okay, now when you look at these clips, you'll see like a little dentation in there, like a like a ball bearing that's pressed on this. What that means is that little other side is like a ball bearing. That's sitting in a hole. So you want to pry it up and move it over. As soon as you get it out of that hole, now it can be it can be moved up. Now it's going to come off. Okay. Now the clip's off. And then that gear will come off. Of course, that gear will come off better once we get this one apart. Same thing. Move this off to the side. Get it out of the hole. Okay. Now you can you can push it off. A lot of this stuff's common sense, but you, if when you have really good common sense, and you go in on an ARC5 uh, transmitter, radio, whatever it is, uh, look, look how bad that is. All right. Now, that shouldn't be white color. That's okay. You can spray that with deox, and it, this thing will work for a week. But that needs to be taken apart and cleaned correctly. Uh, you can see these cross members in there. Or white that's because this is sat in a cellar in a cardboard box in a puddle of water now what I'll do is I'll clean this as best I can with some brushes and I'll, I'll probably put a little bit of a, a motor oil on it just a skim coat of motor oil to, just to keep it from uh, going any further into rust I don't know if this this will come off I don't know if this this if this is press fitted on there could be some washers in this crud but that's what you get now I was just watching counting cars and those guys deal with this stuff at, uh, in a larger scale with cars and I get and they, they very rarely mention um, having a car that someone's worked on before them you know it's sort of unprofessional you're supposed to suck it up you're not supposed to complain about anybody that's been repairing something before you but these people are out there and they brag all the time. Uh, all I did was spray some deox and it worked right away. And then you get the thing and it's it's bodged. Okay. Their fat fingers have been in there. They left screws out. They put uh, now there's there's, a, there's an article on this about this roller inductor. He explains how to rebuild an AR AR uh, ARC5 transmitter. And he warns you don't use deox in certain places. Okay. 
because up in the roller inductor area, you got RF. And any kind of combination of dust, dirt, and uh, deox will cause it to be, to be shorted or to conduct. Okay? You won't see it. You may hear it on your signal. But it's one of those things where uh, you got to search the Internet and look for someone that's gone down the same path you've gone. And that's what I do. Uh, in between doing things, a lot of it's common sense. But as I'm doing, I also read what other people run up against. And they'll tell you. They do it a different way than I do. I do it direct. Uh, I, I used to pick on ham radio operators. They pass the test. Uh, you know, when you, you would pass your driver's test, it doesn't mean you can work on the engine. Well, in ham radio, once you get your license, you make believe you can work on some of the equipment. Some of the best repairmen on transmitters and receivers on ham operators okay it's two, two different animals you know my myself I'm a repairman uh, I've been repairing things as a little kid and I've been undoing other people's messes my entire life and uh, lately it's getting to me it's really getting to me I told you I really don't know what I want to work on but and I, I was kidding about getting the light this new light here uh, towards the end see I suffered with bad lighting uh, I don't have any intro into my videos. Uh, I just learned how to use the pause control. And, uh, oh, and I also wanted to show you, uh, yeah, I, I, as I got to the end of, of the hobby, uh, uh, I'm buying stuff I should have bought a long time ago. But I also wanted to show you this gear here. You see that? It looks like it's paint on there. That's grease that went bad. Okay. And it looks, it's on the gears. It looks like someone dabbed the paint on it. That's not, that's grease. Uh, one guy said that the grease in the old days is basically uh, some type of waxy material with a lubricant mixed in with it. And over time, the lubricant either dries out or it migrates away. And it leaves behind this residue. And I use basically alcohol. Uh, sometimes I pick it away with a, with a, a screwdriver or a, a razor. And I clean it up. And I, I'm, I use a toothbrush a lot. I buy those cheap toothbrushes at the dollar store and I brush all the old grease away into the garbage pail. And then I use, I think I bought some type of stuff called Super Lube or something like that. I use that on the gears. And then anytime you got a shaft going through a bushing, I put a drop of regular motor oil. Do not use three in one motor oil. It stinks, number one, and it, it turns into, it separates, it turns into like a varnish over time. But I just wanted to show you those clips. And uh, you want to make sure that this, this was probably in upside down. There is a, there is a spring to it. Uh, I'm going to put it back in the way it was. Well, anyway, uh, very similar to the volume control. If you saw my video on the volume control. And what was wrong with that volume control? It didn't work in the radio. Radio was brand new in the box. And I took the, the volume control apart. And it had, it had a, a, a little a piece just like this. And uh, it was all tarnished. And I cleaned that. And with an eraser, uh, I cleaned the, the track that it, it goes in. I, I put that thing back together and that volume control worked. Okay. Oh, and the volume controls that I ordered from UK turned out to be a fake website. A fake uh, eBay type website. And I lost 30 bucks. Okay. I was supposed to get three volume controls. And I never got them. So that's the way. But imagine, imagine someone setting up a website, and they use all the hard-to-find uh, parts in, that people are looking for in the world, and that's what they set it up on the on the on the website. So you you get drawn in there looking for volume controls, and then you think, I said, you know, these pictures look familiar. Yeah, they were from eBay. They stole the the thing from eBay, and uh, they used the same pricing, and they got thirty bucks from me. Now I could go through PayPal. And, and spend a day for 30 bucks, you know, uh, email and PayPal, giving them the information and everything. But it is what it is at this point. But I just wanted to show you, you know, the condition of some of this stuff. And like, um, you know, I like, like, like this, this ends the worst. But it's, this has been in a wet basement. Okay. And that's what I did. Anytime stuff's in really good shape. Like say the club, uh, the fake museum club is selling off stuff. The better stuff would go to the members. And then the real junk gets put on eBay, or as I call e-dumpster. 
I think that's it. All right, that's it.